colangiocarcinoma carcinoma is a um, rare cancer. Uh, it's part of biliary tract cancer. So biliary tract cancer includes uh, include um, cholangiocarcinoma carcinoma that we can uh, subdivide in uh, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, perihilar cholangiocarcinoma, and distal cholangiocarcinoma. And uh, we have also gallbladder cancer and uh, uh, cancers of the ampulla of butter. Uh, the ampulla of butter cancer is a bit different, so we will not be talking about that. And so. Among biliary tract cancer, uh, there are cholangiocarcinomas and, and gallbladder cancer. Um, cholangiocarcinoma, as I said, is a rare cancer. It's approximately 3% of all uh, uh, gastrointestinal uh, um, uh, cancer types. And uh, however, especially for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, the incidence is increasing in the last years, especially in countries uh, which a low um, incidence uh, uh, in the past, especially in Western countries. Um, it's important to mention that the intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma is the second um the second most frequent uh, type of uh, primary liver cancer after uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. The prognosis, unfortunately, is uh, still poor. The five year overall survival is less than 20% because most of patients are diagnosed with advanced disease uh, and only uh, probably. 20 to 30% are suitable for surgery at the diagnosis. But unfortunately, 60 to 70% of the patients who undergo surgery uh, eventually relapse. So uh, the prognosis is poor and due to late diagnosis and high uh, relapse rate. Um, currently, the standard of care is uh, um, represented by um, first-line chemotherapy, uh, with for for advanced disease, then I will be talking a bit about uh, um, early stage disease. But for advanced disease, the first line uh, standard of care is uh, represented by uh, the combination of cisplatin plus gemcitabine, so chemotherapy. Um, actually, very recently, uh, new data have been presented at ASCO GI and very recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, Evidence. Um, so the data from the TOPAS-1 trial, that is a phase three trial that compare chemotherapy uh, with the gemcitabine cisplatin versus uh, chemotherapy plus immunotherapy with durvalumab. The trial is positive, and so the new standard of care already in some countries and in the future uh, in, in uh, most of the countries will be uh, gemcitabine cisplatin and durvalumab, so chemotherapy plus immunotherapy. As a second line treatment, we have uh, again uh, uh, chemotherapy with the Folfox regimen, or in uh, uh, especially in Eastern countries, also the combination of naliri plus fluorouracil and folinic acid or fulfiri in Western countries. Um, uh, as I said, uh, these um, are the treatment options for or, um, advanced disease, while uh, for patients who are diagnosed with early stage disease and can undergo surgery, then we have uh, um, adjuvant treatment. We prescribe an adjuvant treatment with a cape cyclone. That is, at least so far, the only um, in Western countries, uh, the only um, adjuvant trial with uh, positive data. So surgery followed by capsizing. But as I said, most of patients are eventually relapse. So in the last year, we had also, uh, we improved also our knowledge about cholangiocarcinoma. We know that no all cholangiocarcinoma are the same. Intrahepatic cholangio is different compared to extrahepatic cholangio that is divided in perihilar and uh, distal. And uh, we um, have learned that uh, approximately 45% um, of patients with a cholangiocarcinoma have some um, genetic aberrations in, in, in the tumor that can be targeted by um, uh, new drugs or targeted agents. Um, especially for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, we can have uh, um, FGFR gene infusions observing approximately 15% of the patients and the IDH1 mutation so in uh, um, probably 15, 20% of the patients. And these are the most frequently observed genetic aberrations. And we have drugs that target uh, these uh, um, genetic aberrations. For instance, for FGFR gene infusions, we have pemigatinib that is approved by uh, the FDA and the EMA um, for patients previously treated with uh, at least one line of chemotherapy. And for IDH, 
which one we have ivocidinib approved by the FDA, again, for patients previously treated. Um, for FGFR, um, two gene fusions in the, in the US by the FDA, also in fibratinib has been approved. And um, so, so the, the, the landscape of treatment is, uh, um, is changing and probably will be changing again in, in the future because there are ongoing trials uh, um, who, uh, which are testing uh, some of these drugs like uh, pemigatinib, infibratinib or futibatinib in first line versus chemotherapy and other drugs uh, in, in previously treated uh, patients. So these are for the most frequently observed genetic alterations. But then we have, uh, for instance, HER2 amplification or HER2 mutation and BRAF mutations. And uh, we have uh, drugs that can be used also to target uh, these other uh, genetic aberrations. So some of them approved, uh, most of them are approved only in the US, but maybe in the future so also in, uh, in, in Europe. Um, and for instance, for BRAF mutation, the FDA has just approved the combination of uh, dabrafenib and trametinib, so anti-BRAF plus anti-MEC. And for HER2 amplification, we have the combination of uh, trastuzumab plus pertuzumab. And for um, HER2 mutation, we have some interesting data with the neratinib, uh, but these drugs are not yet uh, approved for cholangiocarcinoma. And also for uh, cholangiocarcinoma with uh, um, MSI high status or with uh, uh, N-tract infusions, uh, but these are a very, very low percentage of patients. So we have uh, drugs that have been approved uh, um, based on the genetic aberrations, based on the molecular profile and not based on the tumor types like pembrolizumab for MSI high um, tumors or entractinib um, and uh, larotractinib for uh, tumors with uh, um, entract infusions. So this is more or less the, the current and uh, uh, future landscape. And uh, we hope that we will have more drugs available in, in the future.